What's up, y'all? It's Zach and Lippin' Corbin, and yes, you're listening to a what? Not a C-side, not a D-side, but a B-side. Now, listen, it's 2019, so some of y'all don't even know, like, the reference of a B-side, but, like, there was a point in time when, like, you know, musical content was on tapes and records, right? And you would, like, you know, you would flip it over. You would flip the record over. And that would be like the B-side, right? And so the B-side were like the songs that weren't like the chart toppers, but they were still good songs, right? So, you know, that's really what we're trying to do here with B-sides. But see, the thing about living corporate B-sides is the B-sides be hits too. It's kind of like when you think about Beyonce, right? Like you think about like a B-side from Beyonce, like it's still a hit. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what we try to do with living corporate. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying we Beyonce. I'm just saying we making hits though. Um. That's all. Now look, um, we introduced, uh, you know, plenty of guests movers and shakers business people and you know today's no different we have a great guest melanie akule hello hello what's up ceo and founder of menwo llc a company focused on building black wealth and black business Mm -hmm. Melanie describes herself as living at the intersections of business and technology black and female african and american introvert and extrovert leading and supporting and the trees and the forest with a background in data science, product management, business administration, and diversity and inclusion. Come on now. <laughs> so impressive. Melanie, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm great. What a time to be alive. Just just living each day. No, I, I, I 100% agree. Straight up. Thanks so much for having me. No, thank you for being here. Now, look, I know I did a little bit of short intro. Would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, when you say it all like that, I kind of sound like somebody, don't I? <laughs> Just a little bit, though. <laughs> Um, where do I start? Well, first off, I just finished up my MBA, so I am a free woman. You could not pay me to go back to class. Thank you. Yeah, I just finished my MBA from Berkeley Haas. Um, so still living out here in the Oakland area. Okay. Um, born and raised in Burke, Virginia. Wanted to shout out the 703 right quick. Um like I mentioned, or like you mentioned, Nigerian American and really just out here trying to leave a legacy through my company. I love it. I love it. You know, there's so much there. Look, we got to talk about Menwo, right? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the organization. Let's talk about the origin. Let's talk about the vision. Yeah. So Menwo was something that was kind of birthed out of a necessity. Um, I was one of those people that did not want to start a business. Uh, I It was kind of like how in Atlanta, every rapper has a mixtape. Yes. Well, in the Bay Area, it's like everyone's an entrepreneur. Everyone's a founder. So I was like, no, that's not going to be me. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, some life takes you in directions that you don't really, you can't really plan for. So 2015, the George Zimmerman verdict came out and I was mm. loaded, as was most of our community. And right. it really just pushed me to, to do something. And for me, it's, I've always been about economic development, economic empowerment within our community and. I feel like it's the it's really the way that we'll be able to make the changes that we want to see in this country, because you can't you can't play any play in the political game if you don't have financial backing. So that's really those are facts. Yeah, that's really how it came about. So so you're you're absolutely right. And and I think, you know, when I when I look at Menwo and I think about mm, like just the importance of of community. Right. When you talk about like Mm -hmm. black and brown economic empowerment, that doesn't happen in an island and it never has like no group has ever. Um, Mm -hmm. build any type of economic power base or political structure uh, Mm -hmm. on their own right so so you know we're 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 talking about effectively supporting women specifically black women in the workplace Mm -hmm. Uh, and we've talked about that a few times and really you know we really can't talk about that enough you know what has been Mm -hmm. your experience as a black woman in corporate america you know it's it's a unicorn kind of situation sometimes, right? Like mm. sometimes you look around and you're like, man, I'm blessed to be the only person in this room from my community, like to represent and, t- and show them just how bad we can be. But then also on the flip side, it can be extremely stressful. Um, I was working for a fortune 10 company, one of the largest in the world. And it was just amazing to me how I can go so many places and still be the only black woman in the room. And so it really just, yeah. It drove me to want to, one, build community that much more. So I was part of their African-American ERG at work, even led it for a little bit. 
Um, but then also, too, making sure that the knowledge that I'm getting in those rooms, so that in, at work and then also at in B-School, taking that knowledge and bringing it back to my community, because if I'm the only person in that room, that means there are many, many others that's not getting that same type of wealth of knowledge. And so I, I, I took it upon me to make sure that I was doing my best to kind of package that information up and bring it back to, to my community. That's that's super dope. And, you know, it's it's interesting because, you know, experiences, our experiences, they shape the things that we eventually do. Right. So how have your experiences in corporate America shaped the culture that you're trying to build within Menwell? Yeah. Um, so for me, my thing with corporate America is I would go into the office and I didn't know whether I was battling the fact that I was black the fact that I was female or the fact that I was young and in Mm. a leadership position. Mm -hmm. And so it was constantly like, I'm not sure which, you know, which weapon I need to use today and who else trying to fight today. Mm. And so I'm building Minwell. I'm really just focusing on, you know, all of the superficial stuff does not matter, right? Like who are the people that are working with me? Who are the people that I'm working with and how can we work most optimally together? And so I've, I've very much designed the company to, not necessarily worry about working hours or not necessarily work about worry about how people work as long as they're getting their stuff done as long as they're you know working as a team that's really all that matters to me and then also just being able to pour into them as a mentor um as someone that barely knows what she's doing but you know again sharing sharing the few gems that i do have that that's also been important to me just realizing that we can all win it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a zero-sum kind of game no, you're absolutely right. And, and it's like, and I, you know, so you talk about mentorship. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, like, let's say if you had three points, like what would your three points of advice be for women of color um, who are looking to get into entrepreneurship? Ooh, that's uh, three, just three. Uh, it, <laughs> it's hard because I, the community that I work with is primarily black women. And just to see the way that we have so much, we give so much to others and we are very afraid of giving to ourselves. So I think the first point would be making sure that you don't forget to prioritize yourself, right? So like even as a business owner, your job is to, you know, work with your clients, work with your customers, making sure that you're providing a product or service for them that makes them happy. Right. But also you need to take care of your own business, right? So do you have your business processes lined up? Do you have your business strategy outlined? Do you have all the fundamental things that you need to be able to grow your business. So that's that's definitely number one. Number two is it don't be afraid to support your fellow sister. Um, I'm I'm all about the retweeting and the sharing and the you know posting on my stories of everybody and anybody's business that I know about um, because it doesn't it doesn't take any food off of my plate, right? right? Just being able to support and promote the people that I know that are out here hustling as well. It's amazing to me how many people talk about supporting and how the community needs to support more, um, but they don't press that share button or they don't press that like button or they, you know, and so it's just, you know, work on building up that habit of sharing and leaving reviews and all that kind of stuff. Because those are the ways that you can support black owned businesses for free. And then I think last is don't be afraid to ask for help. I think that is one of the things that, you know, for me especially, I had to learn to ask for help, right? So even, and that's a small or a small app or as big as building a team. Um, If you have people that can support you in building your business, that then you're able to run faster, then you're able to do more. Um, But if you cannot even bring yourself to say, okay, I need help and figure out the areas that you need help with and then be able to close your eyes and let go of it and let them actually help you um it you just create a lot of stress and strain for yourself and so i think those would be my three points it's a small flex bomb nothing too crazy you know what i'm saying just a little bit something <laughs> you know, just a little 10 piece form you know what i'm saying anyway i, I definitely agree <laughs> and i it, you're, you're just spot on i mean especially when you talk about you talk about like just sharing, retweeting, you know what I'm saying? Giving five stars. What's up? What's up, listeners? You know what I'm saying? Nudge, so, nudge. Nudge, <laughs> nudge. You know what I'm saying? You see me. You hear me. If you listen <laughs> to this right now, you know you haven't given me five stars. Okay. All right. And then you back come to back. This. Back every time. Right. Right. <laughs> Download numbers going up. Five stars saying the same. What's going right. on? 
come on <laughs> we got to disconnect no but <laughs> but no you're absolutely right um and and i just i love i love the advice um so you know what i like about men is the fact that y'all are building a true community of black and brown women entrepreneurs mm-hmm. right and this type of thing requires trust and so what mm-hmm. strategies have you implemented to build and maintain that because you talked about asking for help and mm-hmm. supporting one another and kind of having your stuff in order i mean Again, it's, it takes a certain level of vulnerability. So what does it look like to to create and maintain that? Yeah, that's that's been a lot of what we've been learning over the last year. So um, the, the community you're referring to is, is Rialto. It's basically a platform for not only black business owners, but black professional service providers to work together, connect um, so that we're, you know, they're they're building each other's businesses, essentially. And what I've found just in the last year of, you know, having a Slack team of these business owners is that it, it requires a lot of listening. Mm. Um, even though I know, you know, I know the things that I've learned in school and I'm like, hey, this is these are topics or things that you should know for your business. It, you can't necessarily start with like throwing scripture at them. Right. You have to understand where they are yeah. and you have to understand the walk that they've walked so far yeah. and, and meet them where they are. Mm. Um, and for me, that's been the most rewarding part. And what's also helped with that is that now what we do are monthly challenges. So this last month, we just did um, a Lean Business Model Canvas Challenge, where everyone in the community um, worked together to work on their own individual Lean Business Model Canvases. Um, and then we have monthly meetups, which are virtual, which is a chance for anyone that wants to join to get together, talk through, you know, their high points, their low points, what it was like for them to go through that experience. And then um, we also have the last little section where it's an open brainstorming session. So as a business owner, you don't often know too many other business owners. So to have that community of people that are living the same life that you are, that are making the same um, sacrifices that you are to, to bring about a vision, I think that's the part where you really start to build that trust in that community is, is from knowing that, okay, they're not just talking for talking sake, right? Like they're actually going through it too. No, that's real. And you know, you're right. You can know everything in the world, but if people don't, they don't trust you. They don't really believe, you know, that you're really listening to them. They just, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to go in one ear out the other. Right. Um, so look, where can folks learn more about Menwo? Yeah. So, we have a company website, minwo.co, that's M-I-N-W-O.co, um, and that's where you can learn more about Rialto, the, the community that I mentioned, and then also Financial Formation, which is the personal finance consulting that I also do. Or you can go to my personal website, melanucci.com, M-E-L-A-N-U-C-H-I.com, and that's where you can find more about personal finance consulting, business consulting, um, and anything else that you're interested in that's related to black wealth or black business. And then it is, you know. <laughs> I'm loving these. <laughs> I'm saying, right? It's like living corporate. It's, so you remember that that Salt Bay meme, but we like sprinkling like sound <laughs> effects on the, on the John. You know what I'm saying? Like we really out here. You know, it's really fun. Uh, <laughs> this has been a really great discussion, and I want to thank you for coming on the show. Of Before course. we go, though, do you have any shout outs? Anybody you're working with? Any other projects you want to mention? Yeah, no, I really just want to shout out the the ladies that I've been working with on um, Minwo and Rialto for the last, I've had business owners that are with me from literally day one, before we had a website, before we had any kind of anything. Um, so the Sydney Pearsall with Part and Parcel, Alexis Coates from um, Lotus Creations, Teddy Renee from TeddyRenee.com. Um, those ladies have really supported me literally from day one. And so I just want to shout them out and say thank you. Man, I know they're thanking you too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you again. And um, yeah, look, y'all, that does it for us. Thank you for joining us on the Living Corporate Podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Living Corporate, Twitter on Living Corporate underscore pod, and subscribe to our newsletter through living dash corporate.com, living dash corporate.com, you know what I'm saying? Or living corporate.co, living corporate.tv, living corporate.org, living corporate.net. You know what I'm saying? We out here, okay? We just don't have, uh, you know, livingcorporate.com because Australia got the domain you know we got all the domains Australia got the main livingcorporate.com domain looking at us like (laughs) and I'm just like I don't know what to do I don't know what to do at this point but you know one day mark my words y'all join me in prayer (laughs) we're gonna be big enough we gonna the brand will be brolic enough one day to get that domain Uh, 
Okay. If you have a question you'd like for us to answer and read on the show, make sure you email us at livingcorpodcast at gmail.com. And that does it for us on the show. You've been listening to Melanie Akule, founder of Menwo. Peace. Living Corporate is a podcast by Living Corporate LLC. Our logo was designed by David Dawkins. Our theme music was produced by Ken Brown. Additional music production by Antoine Franklin for Musical Elevation. Post-production is handled by Jeremy Jackson. Got a topic suggestion? Email us at livingcorporatepodcast at gmail.com. You can find us online on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and living-corporate.com. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned.